hello friends, I put a shirt on for you guys. I was gonna do this naked, but I don't know how that would look for my career. I have never done a reading vlog and I'm kind of scared because I'm not sure how it works. I haven't watched many, but I recently watched one and I was like, that's fun because it was about a book that I had read and I felt connected, you know, because I'm a lonely soul when it comes to books. I don't have that many friends that are interested in books, so I usually, you know, go on my little phone, make some little videos about them, or write some silly reviews on Goodreads, and then I have to forget about those books, and that's kind of sad. And I would love to talk more about books, but this is gonna be a very one-sided conversation, but I do hope that you will help me by overwhelming me in the comment section. I'm very excited for that. What better book to be reading on the internet than The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo? This book has been torturing the internet. It's everywhere, everybody loves it. And you know, I feel like a lot of people have read this already or need some motivation to read it. And I hope that will be me. I talked about this book in my last uh, video for a little bit. Evelyn Hugo is this Hollywood legend. She's like, I don't know, 70 years old. Nobody knows anything about her, but she's so mysterious. She's like Marilyn Monroe archetype, um, Audrey Hepburn, glamorous, super huge Hollywood stars. And she wants this super young, random journalist girly to write her memoir and that memoir will make this girly rich like she will sell it for millions and millions of dollars and this little girl is like what the fuck you are an icon i am nobody and i've only read um i think like 30 pages or something so i'm still fairly at the beginning but i thought let's do it I've only read a few pages and there's already a quote that I just love and this book is already getting better. Here's the thing about Hollywood, it's both a place and a feeling. If you run there, you can run towards Southern California, where the sun always shines and the grimy buildings and dirty sidewalks are replaced by palm trees and orange groves. But you always run towards the way life is portrayed in the movies. It's cute. I like it. It's getting melancholic and I love that. Hello, so I know this is super random, but um, I fell asleep reading and I'm now going to a concert and I just figured out my outfit and I love it and I want to show it to you guys. spend my day doing the most boring and annoying thing that you could think of and that is taxes. My whole floor is covered in my receipts and I'm just feeling a bit like eh because I haven't done anything for my taxes for this whole year so I have to do six months worth of this and I did it all day long. It's like all oh, seven now. And I barely finished January. It's so sad. I have a friend coming over in an hour and we're gonna kick, kick together and <laughs> we're gonna cook together. So I have a bit of downtime to unwind and relax and read. And that's what I'm gonna do now. I am in love. I had low expectations and there was this girl who replied to my story uh, a few days ago where I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. I just started reading it. I don't know. She was like, no, wait for it. Like, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, okay, that's intriguing. And she's, or she is, she, she was, <laughs> she was right. I'm actually halfway through this and there's still some parts that bother me a bit but what I can say is that the romance I don't know like in some ways it's a bit overwritten like it's very 
um, oh, her lips taste like sour candy ice cream, yada yada. But for some reason, it does work, and like my critical brain is like, oh my god, this is like so basic romance tropey. But at the same time, I kind of love it, and it's gotten so gay, and I love it. It's so romantic and. The forbidden love vibes. Oh, I, I love it. And what I do still don't like is, um, you know, it switches between perspectives of the writer who is interviewing, you know, Evelyn Hugo, and then just her perspective, like Evelyn Hugo's perspective. And I get why they're doing it or why Miss Taylor Jenkins redid it. But every time it switches back to Monique, this writer girly, it's still so terribly written. Like uh, she's narrated from a first person perspective and it feels very dull and her character is kind of underdeveloped. So Monique, the writer girly, she works at this magazine, Vivant, and they want her to do a cover. But once she comes, it's like in the beginning, in the first pages, when she gets to Evelyn, Evelyn's like, no, you're not gonna do a piece in a magazine. I want you to write my autobiography. And then she has to like do this thing where she's like, oh, am I gonna lose my job for this potential book that's gonna make me millions of dollars? And it's all still so unrealistic. And the way like, her brain works or the way her brain or her mind is written is just very bleh. and so I do hate that still right now but every time she's gone and it switches back into the 60s to Evelyn and her lovers I'm just like oh and what I also love is that it's such a fast paced read like I've uh, read this in three sittings and it was all three very non-motivated sittings, like just in between, okay, I'll do it and kind of like not even in the mood for reading. But I start reading and, and it's just like brrr, page turner. Hello fam, so I know I said this was gonna be a vlog, but honestly, it's just me babbling and looking kind of ugly. I actually read on the Metro today, but I didn't have my camera and it just would have been random. Um. We're getting there. Look, we're really getting there. There's this huge question about why did Miss Evelyn Hugo want Monique, this random ass writer girly, to write her biography? And uh, Evelyn Hugo, she said, wait, let me, let me find out. Evelyn's mood turns a bit darker. I'm not a good person, Monique. Make sure in the book that that's clear, that I'm not claiming to be good that I did a lot of things that hurt people and I would do them over again if I had to. I don't know, I say. You don't seem so bad, Evelyn. You, all of all people, are gonna change your mind about that, she says, very soon. And all I can think is, what the fuck did she do? What did she do? I have some assumptions and one of them being that Miss Evelyn Hugo killed Monique's dad because he's still dead and honestly like after reading like almost 300 pages it doesn't make sense that she would but I'm still convinced that Evelyn is connected to her dad maybe I'm so wrong and I was so wrong about this book in general I have told you that this book is very gay and I'm sure you can guess who is being gay with who or maybe you can't I don't know and if you know you know and I have a hard time like so far deciding what's been my favorite part of the story because one part is the part where these two gay people I'm trying so hard not to spoil it it's 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 bad but these two gay people they're just meeting it's like the meet cute the romance and then there's the more family focused wholesome picnic vibe era and I can't decide because the second one is such a beautiful like modern queer family dynamic um, but in obviously like a different time and it's just very touching so I don't know but I do love this book the truth is it's not written very well and I say this as a literary critic but it's 
very touching and the story is just so cute like i feel like this would work so well as a netflix show and like i'm reading it for the story not for the words and the language because as i said it's written very basic friends ah the revelation came i'm naked reading but i don't care because i i love to read naked in summer um <laughs> not the point the point being i was not right but also right it has something to do with her dead father because it's just too obvious from the first page but it's not at all what i expected and i didn't see that one coming like at all because of course in storytelling and writing you often have to I, I forgot what it's called i actually learned it at some point it's saying um plan and reward or something so you plan something at like an early point in a story and then you reveal it later it's basically how every netflix show works and now looking back it makes so much sense and i completely overread it like i brushed it aside <laughs>